a foreign word to us. The people of Penacone could never come to any harm while under the watchful protection of the family. In a dream, even if you're bashed a thousand times with a hammer, at worst you'll still wake up in reality in a hotel. Not necessarily. Even if the result does not constitute harm, the criminal intent is clear enough. You specifically came here to cordon off the scene because of the unsavory nature of this case, right? You're not wrong. Even if there are no casualties, being smashed over the head with a hammer in the middle of the street for no reason at all? This is not the kind of thing that happens on Penacone. You are guests of the Oak family, so you may investigate the crime scene. I'll be on standby over here. Are you a witch? Just how did you manage to convince them in the blink of an eye that we're some kind of detectives? Just some suggestions at the memory level. If something happens in everybody's memory, then that something becomes a fact. Rather than hearing endless explanations, would you like to experience it for yourself? No, no, no! Hey, you can save that for the enemy. Then, on to the next order of business. Let's discuss your companion, shall we? Memo Keeper of the Garden of Recollection. I've been watching you for quite some time. You stole a glance at me when you first entered the hotel. You followed me wherever I went inside the dreamscape. In the windows along the commercial street. In the pond water reflections of the Idean Park. Even in the reflections of the wine glass. Everywhere. My dear, do you have a crush on me? Well then, seeing as you're so interested in me, let's play a little game. I left a puzzle for you near OT Mall. Solve it and prove that you're capable of pleasing me. If you can solve it, then... We can talk. Don't leave me waiting, my dear. Before Penacone gets flipped upside down, try to find me, catch me, and stop me. There's actually more than one memo keeper who's come to Penacone. She's mixed me up with someone else. But no harm, no foul. The address that the mask gave you is right here. But you never would have thought that when Miss Sparkle mentioned a game, she was talking about wanton slaughter on the streets of Penacone. Such a direct act of provocation is enough to get my competitive side worked up, too. Madam, forgive me. I have no idea about anything she said. As you saw, I went through a brain scan and everything. I'm just a friend, helping her deliver a letter, that's all. I never knew this was actually a declaration of warfare. They say you shouldn't kill the messenger. So, maybe you can just, you know... Let me go. You all are the big shots here. I'm really not on your level. <laughs> What a frightened look you have. Don't worry. Since this has nothing to do with you, I won't be suspecting you of anything. Why don't you come take a stroll with me? Oh, seems like I can't escape being an assistant detective. Oh, fine. It's all fine. No big deal. Anything you'd like to know, please ask away. Who was the victim? An IPC employee named Shamari. 
Eyewitnesses reported that a tall, strong man wearing a large robe with long sleeves walked right past Shamari and suddenly assaulted him with a hammer. Shamari collapsed on the spot and woke up from the dream. The murderer vanished in a flash. Ooh, that sounds just like Sparkle. Her best asset is transforming her appearance to look like someone else. Who are those two little guys? Seems like the assailants stole the troop from elsewhere and deliberately placed them here. What nerve. They don't even have the slightest consideration for public order. Those two have clammed up. I wonder if you two could help pry open their mouths. Looks like a puzzle that Sparkle has left behind for you. Any leads yet? This is a developing case, so there aren't many clues yet. All we have to go by are the weapon used by the assailant and the victim's ID. They didn't even take the weapon with them. Sounds like they're trying to provoke us. Despicable. Where's Mr. Shamari right now? I'd like to meet him. I'm afraid you can't. The Oaks came forward and calmed him down. Mr. Shamari expressed that he understands the unpredictable nature of dreams, and went on to vacation in another dreamscape. Best not to bother him. Guests' experiences always have to come first. Oh, I'm afraid by the time we find him, half of Pentacony will have been sent back to reality by Sparkle. Looks like we'll have to play this little game of Sparkles then. They can talk after all. Miss Black Swan, they're heading straight for you. Don't interrupt, I wasn't talking to you. Ahem! I understand Lady Black Swan has quite the intellect. I'm sure you'll be able to get to the bottom of the Sparkle Murder Case. The Sparkle Murder Case? Wasn't the victim Shamari from the IPC? You're wrong, Lady Black Swan. The victim is evidently none other than the matriarch of the Goldhammer family, Miss Sparkle Goldhammer. Oh, I guess Miss Sparkle has written herself into the skit here, and this has nothing to do with the actual case. Goldhammer? Is that her real surname? Never heard of it. Sounds made up. Sparkle doesn't sound like a real name either. Sparkle was supposed to receive three valiant warriors at the Goldhammer residence today, but upon their arrival, all they found was her body. Miss Sparkle had been smashed over the head by a hammer and died on the spot. Such a brutal act of violence. My investigations discovered that the three warriors were supposed to escort supplies back to their territory the day before but they were unexpectedly ambushed by the Annihilation Gang. They narrowly escaped and barely got away with their lives, finding their supplies almost completely raided. So they all shared a motive for killing Miss Sparkle. To escape punishment! So the three of them teamed up to kill her. Huh? Hmm. Is the case closed? No, oh, there can only be one murderer! Unsolved mystery if there are three murderers. Hang on, wait. Hmm. Uh, if you can't justify it, don't bother. Got it! Those three were all vying against each other to be number two. They couldn't have cooperated on anything. So it must have been one of them acting alone. That actually doesn't make much sense. Even if they were on bad terms, those three... Please begin your investigation, Lady Black Swan. There are lots of clues at the crime scene that are sure to help you apprehend the real culprit. I've got the case file right here. 
If you want to learn more about the suspects, talk to me. Lady Black Swan, allow me to introduce the three suspects to you. Lefton, Shongshan, and Wright. Lefton is one of Miss Sparkle's chief lieutenants, whose right hand was unfortunately severed while he was valiantly fighting off the Annihilation Gang. He's now learning how to write and hold a fork with his left hand. How tough that must be! Then there's Zhongshan. This guy's a coward who ran away as soon as a group spotted some bandits along the road. He ended up smashing into the side of a cliff and getting his face disfigured. It's a real shame, as he used to be one of the rare handsome men left around town. Last of all comes Wright. This guy was so insatiably greedy that he still came back to try and embezzle the rest of the supplies after they narrowly escaped with their lives, lying about how the gang had taken off with everything. Lefton and Zhongshan were so incensed that they broke his legs. Hang on, I'm confused here. Left on? Right? Is this some kind of joke? What? Where did you get that idea from? Do you need me to go over it all again? That won't be necessary. I've memorized every detail. No wonder you're a memo keeper. Look! An ID card. Uh, Talent Motivation Department, Shamari. Is this the victim's? Mr. Shamari's belongings should have disappeared alongside him as he woke from the dreamscape. The fact that this ID is here means Miss Sparkle placed it here on purpose to prove that she definitely attacked someone. Holy moly! This hammer is super heavy! This must be the murder weapon for the Sparkle murder case! Miss Sparkle also used it to attack Mr. Shamari. I'm barely able to lift this using both hands! I have no idea how Sparkle could ever use this to hit a target! Is that all the evidence? How are we meant to solve this with so little to go on? Oh, you scared me! When did you pop out? The two pieces of evidence that you found are related to the attack on Shamari. Miss Sparkle didn't leave them lying around for no reason. They're clues to the puzzle. But... There are still some... Other clues that were placed in other areas, so they won't spoil the crime scene. Isn't that a bit unnecessary? No, no. It's disruptive to have a stack of irrelevant things crowding a crime scene. Miss Sparkle is a law-abiding citizen who'd never bring extra trouble to the family. Seems quite nice of her, if you ask me. Hmm. Looks like Miss Sparkle is adding a little spice to the investigation. Let's take her up on her offer, then. Mr. Assistant Detective, this way. little device here for. Could you please let me know? It looks like a little button. Don't push it, Lady Blackspawn. Whatever you do, don't push it! That's the mutually assured destruction button that Miss Sparkle installed. Once pushed, Miss Sparkle and the entirety of Penetroni will instantaneously go up in smoke! Miss Sparkle also has her own button! The second she pushes hit, 
You and the entirety of Penacloni will instantaneously go up and smoke! That sounds like... Both buttons can do the exact same thing. Correct! Exactly the same. Uh. Oh. Aren't you going to ask me why? Okay. Why? Because she is fair. This is nuts! What's this? A plush toy? Regardless of why it's designed to look like the conductor aboard the Astral Express, this doll, is it connected to the case? Have you ever heard of something called a red herring in detective stories? It's a fake clue that leads you down the wrong path. I see. But when it's so obvious, doesn't that defeat the purpose? Just in case you didn't realize the ingenuity of Miss Sparkle and were worried about her trying at a random useless clue. <laughs> I see. Thank you for your keen insight. Then, let's pretend we were misled by a red herring. Hmm. This doll. Could it be connected to the case? Uh. You don't have to play along that hard, you know. Seems like a hint for us from Miss Sparkle.
That sounded like a story from ancient times. And why did the facial recognition system suddenly go out? This is so her style, isn't it? Doesn't look like there are any more clues. Let's head back to the crime scene. Next, should we pin down the identity of the perpetrator? This evidence, I've been staring at it all day, but there's nothing that can identify the perp. Lefton, that guy lost his hand. Remember Zhang Sheng's face was disfigured after the incident at the cliff, right? I remember this one best. Wright has a broken leg. Why don't we flip the question and start by asking who couldn't be the murderer? After all, there are only three suspects, so elimination could be a valid method. If you put it like that, then do you already have someone in mind? Tell me, come on. Exactly is the murderer? I remember this one best. Wright has a broken leg. Oh, is that so? I feel like the evidence doesn't really match. How about you think it over again? So, who exactly is the murderer? Lefton, that guy lost his hand. Based on the bailiff's statement, Lefton's dominant hand was seriously injured to the point where he had to learn how to live using only his left hand. Swinging that giant sledgehammer to murder someone, that must be hard for him. Probably impossible. Lefton's suspicion level can be downgraded. So, who exactly is the murderer? Remember Zhang Shan's face was disfigured after the incident at the cliff, right? Poor guy. He was seriously injured and was all wrapped up in bandages to keep his good looks safe. If that's the case, then he couldn't have made it through the Goldhammer Residence's facial recognition system. That would suggest that Zhongshan is not the murderer. By process of elimination, it seems that only Wright could be the murderer. That was easy. Let's tell the constable our answer and see what he thinks. The murderer is right. <sighs> you have answered correctly! As expected, you didn't disappoint Lady Black Swan. Game will stipulate I must tell you what the next puzzle is. Huh? The next puzzle? I didn't sign up for this. Looks like the key to winning lies not in the puzzle itself, in the motives behind Miss Sparkle's strange behavior. I'm afraid this chase may just go on forever. I have to remind you that Sparkle is a masked fool? Do you plan on finding logic in the mind of a masked fool? That's exactly what I plan on doing. Even if it's just subjective, there must be an overall principle behind the behavior. Memories cannot lie, and hers may just understand more about her than she does herself. Right now, let's follow her train of thought and head to the next puzzle. I hope this time we can get ahead of the Bloodhound family. 
I want to try and avoid using my Memo Keeper powers. So why are you so focused on Sparkle's challenge? Or should I ask, are you more focused on Sparkle herself? I told you, it's purely out of a spirit of competitiveness. And as a memo keeper, I also have to fulfill my responsibilities and harvest some interesting memories. Whoa, this place is a complete mess. And those two weirdos are probably here, too. There's nobody else at the scene. Seems like Miss Sparkle used the same method to send streamers back to reality. Let's talk to those two there, then. Discard your worthless death. Oh, Detective Black Swan and Detective Sampo! You finally made it! We don't know what we'd do without your help. Why are you talking like that? Is this some sort of artistic performance that young people are into these days? Is there something wrong with the way we are talking? Deputy Sheriff, am I talking in a strange way? Oh, of course not, Sheriff. The way you talk is no stranger than the cat that climbs the apple tree in my grandma's backyard. Huh. Yet this time is a modernist one. Let's discuss this difficult case then. The victim is a galactic business magnate named Sparkle. Her again? Sparkle really is obsessed with scripting her own death. Oh, for the laughter. If you undercut me one more time, I swear I'm gonna kick you in the butt. Miss Sparkle came to the fashion store to buy herself a brand new tie. She didn't come back out. After a long time, the shopkeeper went in to see what was going on, but instead discovered Miss Sparkle's body. She had been strangled to death. There were three suspects on the scene, namely a Papeshi shopkeeper named Rhett, a Foxy and Gambler named Zhang Shan, and a wealthy Intellitron trainer called Lefton. Our old friends. It's not just to aid your memory. We've added more descriptions to help tell them apart. Miss Sparkle is so gracious. Based on surveillance footage, witness testimony, and various pieces of evidence, the killer is ultimately among these three, and they were not working in cahoots. You're too lazy to be a suspect, right? Oh, for the laughter! If I talk any more with you, it'll make my pure soul filthy! Detective Black Swan, the dossiers are over here. You can learn more about the suspects from me. I trust you'll be able to cut through the hogwash and find out who Miss Sparkle's killer is. Let me introduce the identities of these suspects to you. It's very straightforward. First of all is the shopkeeper, right? He's one of the Papeshi people and only stands as tall as Sparkle's waist, which is often a source of teasing for him. He can get pretty salty about it. Next up, you have the merchant Lefton. He wants to join up with the Panacone Trading Guild and is in direct competition with Miss Sparkle. That could be a motive for killing her. Finally, there is the gambler, Zhang Shan. He lost a bet to Miss Sparkle, and he had to hand over his family heirloom. It's possible he harbored a grudge against her. That's all the information we have. Do you need me to repeat it? That won't be necessary. I remember it all. There's an accounting book lying on the ground. It must have been specially placed there by Sparkle. 
on the title page is written Chen Katong. Is that someone's name? <gasps> A code name. Oh, I think it's the name of the owner of this book. This Chen Katong person should be Sparkle's targeted victim this time around. And there's the tie. That skit before said that the deceased was strangled. Is this tie some kind of joke murder weapon? The tag on the tie reads, only for Imperial Master Lefton. Seems like it's one of Miss Sparkle's personal belongings. That's not how you use the word Imperial. So, it's just like the first case then. Only two pieces of evidence. The rest hidden inside her memories again, right? Sparkle doesn't want to distract your investigation. She doesn't want to distract our investigation? What a law-abiding citizen this Sparkle is. Why doesn't she surrender then? seems quite normal. There are two small footprints drawn on it in crayon. The footprints, which are half as big as standard, must belong to a Papeshi person. Perhaps it's just that this person's drawing skills are extraordinary. that smell? Why is there a smoked red herring there? Mr. Sampo, take a look. This is a wonderful smoked red herring. <laughs> Somebody save me from this cringe joke. Even among the fools I know, Miss Sparkle's sense of humor stands out from the rest. Have you dealt with many masked fools before? No, only a handful. After all, I prefer warm memories baked in sunshine. They're the ones that usually belong to kind people. Is... Open it up and take a look.
a ring inside. This is evidence too. Why was it planted inside another device? Because this ring was found inside the victim's mouth. We want to reconstruct the scene of the crime. In the victim's mouth? Hey, there's something engraved inside the ring. John Sean Family Heirloom. That should be it. Let's head out. I have to thank you, Mr. Assistant Detective. But the puzzle this time is pretty strange. Have you found out who the killer is? Just some shallow intuition. Anyway, let's report back to the sheriff for now. Oh, for the laughter! Didn't think I'd be seeing Detective Black Swan so soon. Was that? You found out who the killer is? Pretty much. You live up to your reputation, Detective Black Swan. As smart as the nest of magpies roosting in the roof of my Uncle Frank's garage. Uh, this guy is mixing up his birds here. Then go ahead. Who is the killer? And what evidence do you have to prove the case? Good. Then let us appreciate your powers of deduction. Solved the case. Wright is a Papeshi citizen, and Miss Sparkle was a long key bigot, always laughing at his height. This stool is a piece of evidence, right? That's right! That's the one! Miss Sparkle always teased poor Wright until he was unable to take it any longer. Eventually, murderous intent was born. Taking advantage of his position, he stole Lefton's tie and told Miss Sparkle, Miss, please come with me to the changing room. I'd like to show you a matching tie. Miss Sparkle never thought Wright would retaliate against her, so she went back with him to the changing room. As Wright stood atop the stool and helped Miss Sparkle try on the tie as usual, he then suddenly pulled it tight! And that's how he killed Miss Sparkle! What a tragedy! If it weren't for your incisive detective work, the murderer would still be at large! Uh, is something wrong here? This is too easy. The first case wasn't hard, but this one. As you can imagine, the conclusions that the evidence points to are not mutually exclusive. Which means, this is probably another prank from Miss Sparkle. Mr. Assistant Detective, please feel free to point out a suspect as the murderer. Ah, oh, I see. Sheriff, the murderer is Lefton. The evidence is the tie, right? Correct, Detective Sampo. I never thought you'd be able to deduce the truth. Sheriff, the murderer is right. The evidence is the stool, right? Yes! For the laughter, how did I fail to realize this formidable intellect of yours? That right from the start, there was no murderer. The evidence is the ring. Whatever, I'm just spitballing here. I... Goodness me! Deputy Sheriff, is he really a genius? How could such an unfathomable mystery be solved so easily by him? Oh. Look, Miss Sparkle has given us a puzzle where every single answer is correct. I take it so seriously! Miss Sparkle is a masked fool, not a masked genius! If it's a challenging puzzle you want, please go out there and turn right until you get to the Intelligentsia Guild. We're only responsible for providing an entertaining detective experience. Anyway, 
Since our genius detective Black Swan has cracked the case, I will now share Miss Sparkle's next puzzle with you. So that's it? This is just going to go on and on forever? We can't do that. Hmm. Then I wish you both the best. Oh, yes, if you're not in a hurry, I can tell you the answers for some of the outcomes you never chose. Just as you said, solving puzzles is all just a cover for something else. That girl is toying with us. What should we do now? Just keep getting led around by her? Truly, Miss Sparkle is a fascinating person. She seems chaotic inside, but easy enough to understand. Like a performer on the stage or a child hungering for attention. This game will be over soon. This time, we're going to catch her. Miss Black Swan, Mr. Seven, you're finally here. I am the famed detective of Panacone, and next to me here is my assistant detective. A murder in a locked room has left us all stuffed. As expected, another change in setting. Yesterday, my assistant and I were visiting the famed artist, Miss Sparkle, and we stayed the night. But this morning, Miss Sparkle didn't come out of her bedroom. The butler, Jean Chan, said that the door was locked from inside, so we ought not to have disturbed her. But Miss Sparkle had never slept in this world. And no matter how hard he knocked, there was no answer from inside. As soon as I heard, I knew something must have happened. So I acted decisively and broke the door down to get inside. The room was covered in spattered blood. Miss Sparkle's body was lying right in the middle, her face white as snow. One look told me she'd been dead for some time. Thinking quickly, I grabbed the artist's canvas to stanch Miss Sparkle's blood, but... Alas! Poor Miss Sparkle! She's left us now forever! Besides us and Zhang Shan the butler, Left and the cook and right the driver were also at the seams to climb. <sighs> what would you like to do? Presumably, Miss Sparkle is now carefully arranging the next crime scene, right? Why don't you skip all this rigmarole and just have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with me? It might tickle a little. <sighs> Wait up! Wait up! Hmm. Honest kid, I know where you are, Miss Sparkle. No, no cheating. cheating! Huh, Mr. Assistant Detective. You seem to be getting anxious. Uh, uh no, I, I, it's... <laughs> this locked room murder case is pretty fun. <laughs> I, I want to guess who it was. Let's go. Can't keep a girl waiting, can we? Hey, Miss Black Swan, wait up, wait, wait up. up! Miss Sparkle has one final message to announce. Ding a ling! Now comes the most exciting and romantic moment in any drama the audience challenge. Everyone knows that the mighty masked fool Sparkle can change her appearance to look like others. And in this drama, the villain Sparkle has disguised herself as another character. So then, I put to you, which character is it? Also, if you're interested in the locked room case that the memo keeper ignored, you can try out your powers of deduction. I put lots into coming up with the puzzle, so don't let it go to waste. Thus, the masked genius Miss Sparkle has thrown down the gauntlet. All the clues are in motion. Happy hunting! Miss, why didn't you just do this earlier? 
such a crude approach violates my aesthetics of memory. But as a means to an end, I need to put this aside for a more indifferent process. There's no weird, sweet dreams troop, nor is there evidence strewn all over the place. We finally caught up with her. Uh, but what's that thing? A Bella Boggian trash can? In Penacony? Hey! Dear Memo Keeper and Mr. Coldfeet, you made it. I didn't expect you to skip the final puzzle. That's on me. All right, all right. Miss Sparkle cares not for the faults of ants like me. Come then, this is the final question. Listen up. What creature has four legs in the morning, two legs in the afternoon, and three legs at night? No murder case this time around. Sometimes it's nice to take things easy. Come on, dear, give me your answer then. Since it's a classic puzzle, the answer is people, right? Wah, wah. Wrong answer. How could it be as boring as that? The correct answer is... Sparkle! When sleepy in the morning, she can't get out of bed. She runs about all afternoon in a fluster, so is exhausted by evening but has to still raise a hand to hold a toothbrush. Poor Sparkle. So if you have your hands got four legs in the morning, two legs in the morning, and three legs at night. What the heck was that jibber-jabber? What a cute answer. Thanks for the compliment, my dear. But you can't try to fool me, seeing as you've just tried to cheat. Wrong answer. Accept your punishment. swinging from nowhere. Huh? No voices? <sighs> this guy's pretty quiet. Miss, let's hurry up. Flip open the lid and find the girl. Wait. Don't move. Something's off. Is possible. How can people die inside Penacone's dreamscape? In the Garden of Recollection. What did you do? <sighs> you did this, didn't you? Killing people in their dreams. Only the remembrance has the powers to do that. You planned it out all from the start because she teased you and was pranking you. You wanted to kill her. Oh, I understand. You refused to let me go because you wanted to drag me into all of this. 
If I don't agree, I'll end up just like she did. There is no death inside Penacone's dreamscape. That's the promise of the family and the blessing of the Harmony. Not even a memo keeper can break this barrier. There's no need to take such great pains. If you just want confirmation, I've already told you the answer, Miss Sparkle. M Miss Sparkle! Who are you talking to? You. Sparkle has disguised herself as another character. Wouldn't that be you, Mr. Sampo? This? Don't jump to conclusions! If you want to accuse me of being Sparkle, you have to provide the evidence. Oh, I'm afraid evidence is a little too hard to come by. So, deduction will do. The hint for the final question was a little too obvious. Oh, you mean the locked room murder. <laughs> I thought you weren't doing that one. All the painstaking effort that Miss Sparkle put into it. How could I ever miss it? The key to solving the puzzle lay in two pieces of information put forward by the detectives. First, the large splatter of blood at the crime scene. Second, the victim had been dead for some time. Based on my shallow understanding, I can only draw two conclusions. One is that the murderer did not need to create a locked room case, because a locked room always needs a reason to exist. But, based on the detective's description, this locked room did not delay the discovery of the body. There was no third party at the crime scene to frame, and the blood everywhere didn't look like a fake to suicide. That being so, the murderer seems to have no reason for creating a locked room. There is also reason to speculate that if the crime scene was a locked room, then its creator might not necessarily be the murderer. As for my second conclusion, it's even more obvious still. When everyone broke into the scene of the crime, why did the assistant rush off to staunch the blood? A trained professional was somehow happily destroying a crime scene just to save someone who's obviously been dead a while. The answer is simple. It's because the assistant detective is the murderer. At the time, I was in such a hurry that I didn't hear the whole mystery. I tentatively speculated that the murderer had killed the victim the night before, but hadn't locked the door from the inside. And so, when he learned this piece of information, he realized that the victim had created their own locked room mystery. That's why he had to rush to the crime scene as soon as possible, to confirm whether or not the victim left any evidence implicating him. And, judging by his behavior, it probably had something to do with that canvas. Like some final words. Of course, this is just a simple mind game. The answer to the puzzle isn't important. Miss Sparkle just wanted to pass on one hint to me. That the murderer is the assistant detective. Which means it's you, Mr. Sambo. I've been using this term of address, but it was you who first came up with it. Has anyone ever told you that you're more like a detective than a memo keeper? In my opinion, there is no difference between the two. Follow ripples along the surface of the water. Use some abilities and tricks to keep diving deeper and touch that secret deep inside people's hearts. Salvage it, and protect them carefully. The truth does not lie. Neither do memories. Exquisite reasoning, and very close to the truth. But I have another answer. Would you like to hear it? Another answer? 
The great artiste Sparkle locked herself away in her bedroom using red paint to create the semblance of spattered blood everywhere. And that assistant detective who was first on the scene, who confirmed her death, was not the murderer, but rather an accomplice who assisted her in faking her own death. What a pity, such a pity. My dear, you were so, 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 so close to the right answer. Unfortunately, the right answer is... Miss Sparkle's body. Sparkle was disguised as... Sparkle's body. Ding-a-ling! I won! Does Miss Sparkle's body even count as a real character? Why not? Miss Sparkle's body appeared in all three of those skits just then. It's a little bit forced, but it's fine. So, who is this Mr. Sampo, then? Beautiful lady, I already confessed everything to you earlier on. I really didn't know a thing. I just helped a friend send a letter. That's all. So I've been running a fool's errand this whole time. My dear, why so serious? Haven't you been having a great time? I have, at least. You take the memories? And I get joy. We get what we need from each other. Seeing as we're such kindred spirits, but also such loners. Why don't you come and work with me? Ooh, we can dance ballet together. Oh, am I understanding this correctly? A masked fool inviting me to work together? A show of unprecedented splendor is about to be staged in Panacone. If you're too late to take the stage, you can work behind the scenes. If you want to appreciate this drama, you have to stand up under that spotlight as you take the stage and watch the dancing envelop you. Come with me. This is the best seat in the house. I don't really understand why you're so fixated on destroying family barriers. But, as I said before, a memo keeper can't help you. It's frankly above my pay grade. Also, I don't consider you a loner. Oh, I don't mean him, but rather behind you. The one who hired you to come to Panacone probably doesn't want you secretly linking up with other forces, right? How did you know? Memory is like the deep blue sea. But if you try to catch two fish with one cast, you might not be satisfied with your catch. <laughs> so, you mean you're refusing? Memo Keeper, did you think you could just leave? Why not? <laughs> My dear, I don't want to scare you. You'll know the answer sooner or later. We're just getting to know each other a little today. If you ever change your mind, come find me at the tavern. That is, if you can find me. <laughs> Let's go, Sam... Sampo? Sampo. Who is... Sampo? Uh, this is... This is... Bellabug, right? I said, why not?
<laughs> Don't worry. Such a crude approach violates my aesthetics of memory. So once you leave my sight, you'll be able to remember everything again. And also... I'm sorry, my dear. My dream dance partner? I've already got sights on someone else. Nested structure. The iron clay inside the dreamscape is as real and captivating as being in a dream within a dream. That's the end of Miss Black Swan's dream. Are you satisfied? I noticed that the people in your dream were familiar to you. It's worth repeating that dreams are just dreams. And in Penacombe, dreams can be processed, or even tempered. Things in our dreams cannot be trusted. They ruin someone else's dreamscape. If there's any information that you'd like to confirm, please do so by the cold, hard line of reality. Really? I wouldn't do anything to her. Don't worry about that, Memo Keeper. Let's talk about my thing. I've helped you out with everything you've asked, as agreed. Shouldn't you give my mask back to me now? Since when did the masked fools suddenly start respecting agreements? <laughs> Just kidding. I love to see that look on your face. Take this key to the tavern cellar, third barrel on the left. You never saw me. But Sampo, after all this time, what made you suddenly want to take back your mask? This doesn't seem like the Sampo I know. Let me guess. A catastrophe is coming to Yorello 6. Am I right? Well, no comment about that. But I love that line you said. If you're too late to take the stage, you can work behind the scenes. That really makes sense. Sometimes even an old-timer like me feels like taking the stage and making a fool out of myself. If you're all out of options, please get in touch with me. I'm the kind of person who values friendship highly. Forget it. You'll be doing me a favor if you stay away from Bellabog. After all, the elation that Miss Sparkle seeks isn't something old Senpo can stand by. Go tell Giovanni I said hi. Fine, I'm just spitballing here. Don't take it so seriously. Why so serious?
Thank <laughs> you. 